Hello, welcome to Herb Corner, where we'll be discussing the Peter's Bandit Skink, also known as Skinkopus fasciatus. The Peter's Bandit Skink is light nougat with black blotches along the dorsal scales and a white underbelly. They have pitch black eyes that make it difficult to tell whether they're nocturnal or diurnal. They are nocturnal. Anatomically, they're comparable to a sandfish skink. This is mostly due to the fact that this build is very good for burrowing. They're able to just completely disappear in any loose substrate you leave them on. By their ears are large, pointed scales that act as a shield to prevent sand from falling in. Most fossorial skinks actually have this. For instance, many localities of blue tongue skink. Further proving the evolutionary function is the fact that arboreal skinks, such as monkey-tailed skinks or emerald green skinks, do not possess this trait. Full-grown Peter's Bandit skinks measure at around 5 to 7 inches. Their lifespan goes from 15 to 20 years. Peter's Bandit skinks were discovered in 1864 by Wilhelm Peters, a German naturalist and explorer. They are native to Sudan, Libya, Chad, Niger, Tunisia, Algeria, Mali, Mauritania. They're most commonly spotted in areas with loose dry soils, with loose dry soil and habitats such as savannas, subtropical shrublands, and deserts. This species is judged by the IUCN Red List as data deficient meaning there is too little documentation on the species to assess the general population numbers. In terms of the animal's localities, there is a fragmented population around Mauritania, Morocco, Tunisia, and Algeria. This is possibly due to the fact that the species is often hidden underground, such as with their fossorial nature. Fossorial is when the animal exhibits burrowing behavior. Their populations may be threatened by a multitude of things. For instance, some locals will sometimes catch Peter's Bandit skinks and in the wild for commercial sales. Other than that, since they're in relatively high demand, some people will catch Peter's Bandit skinks from the wild and distribute them at Reptile Expos for sale. The prevalence of this scenario has also probably led to a decrease in their populations. The care of the Peter's Bandit skink is fairly simple. For a substrate, Exoterra Desert Sand works beautifully. It's imperative that this species is given some kind of burrowing substrate. That's the bare minimum in regards to their care. Just don't give them anything like walnut shells, since those are very sharp, or calcium sand. Never give an animal calcium sand. Sand in general is pretty controversial when it comes to reptiles, for a good reason. Leopard geckos and bearded dragons can often die from compaction because of it, but some reptiles, like the Peter's Bandit Skink, have been proven to thrive on it. Reptile Rapture is an organization that's talked extensively about how well their captive specimens do on it, breeding and all and they've effectively pioneered the care for this animal. There should be around 4 inches of substrate. Something I'd recommend for really any desert species is a humid hide. A humid hide is some kind of small enclosure, usually a Tupperware box, with a way for the reptile to crawl in and out of. It's filled with humid substrate, for instance, sphagnum moss or exoterra plantation soil. The purpose of this is for whenever the skink is in shed, he can crawl into the humid hide to make shedding easier because of the moisture. I wouldn't recommend soil as a general substrate for the entire enclosure because under the circumstance that it maintains a general humidity throughout the tank, that could cause mold buildup or a bacterial infection for the skink, or attract mites or cause a sinus infection. Speaking of moisture, always have a decently sized water bowl available. Consistently clean the water bowl, something like once a week to prevent bacterial buildup. If you'd like to go the route of bioactivity, that's a little harder to capture since most people specialize in capturing more exotic ecology. The best way you could get anywhere near a bioactive setup is with a cleanup crew consisting of blue death beetles, though they're very expensive, and air plants. Desert air plants are good since you don't need to worry about giving them a rooting system, and the blue death beetles are good since not only will they feed on the skink's feces, but they'll also serve as an occasional prey for them. An appropriate size for the skink's enclosure would be around the size of an exoterra medium low, which is about a 20 gallon. Feeding the Peter's Bandit skink is interesting. I say interesting because they are, like many other skinks, omnivorous. This means you can feed a wide variety of things. Do the th two to three times a week. As with most omnivorous reptiles, it's important to feed them a varied diet consisting of hornworms, superworms, waxworms, crickets, and the like. Any feed or insect served with some kind of fruits or and or vegetables dusted with reptocalcium is the optimal diet. Other options include the San Diego Zoo diet or Repashi Blue Buffet. Just so long as it's varied and contains a decent amount of protein and plant gunk, it'll be alright. 
They should have a basking spot and bulb provided with an average temperature of 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Most keepers who've had success with this species have used have used UVB bulbs, so I recommend those over heat pads. <laughs> I've seen cases where Peter's banded skinks were cohabbed with one another, and it worked out fine, though it's important to know that the other skink was a female and they ended up mating. I wouldn't recommend cohabbing a male and a male, or a female and a female, just to be safe. Most skinks are territorial anyway, so it's best not to risk it. Handling the Peter's Bandit skink is rather easy compared to most skinks. They're small skinks, but have the temperament of a big skink. From what I've seen, they're effectively the rosy boas of skinks. Small lizards are often skittish and trying to wriggle away, whereas larger lizards are generally less fearful. This probably comes from the fact that when you're bigger, a lot less things want to eat you. I've seen a lot of people handling Peter's Bandit skinks, and they'll just sit there maybe reposition themselves occasionally, but for the most part, you could just sit with them and they'd be good. Additionally, the chances of you being hurt by this skink in any way at all are very, very small. They aren't known to bite, but if they did, the worst you'd get would be a cut. Their nails are blunt and tiny, so that's not, so that's also not any case of concern. They're comparable to leopard gecko nails. They're incredibly hardy, though. In general, the care for this species is a little up in the air. We're for the most part getting our info from those who, from those who've cared for this species for a long time. Since Peter's banded skinks have, for the most part, gotten more popular from Clint's reptiles doing a video on them, there is still a lot more for us to find out. All in all, though, they make for a very good reptile for beginner keepers. These banded skinks have that inquisitive nature that most skinks possess, which makes for an all-around personable animal. However, I wouldn't recommend actually getting one for beginners. For beginners, at least not yet. Let me explain. Breeding of the Peter's banded skink is quite rare, which makes captive bred specimens well sought after. When there are species like this one, where captive breeding isn't common, I'd recommend only getting a Peter's banded skink if your main intent is breeding, or you see someone who is genuinely doing captive breeding. It can be hard to tell the difference, since a lot of the times importers will flat out lie about it. Some ways to tell is just how knowledgeable they are on the species. Ask them about the details of their husbandry, what they feed them, things like that. If their answers sound like guessing, don't trust them. If they're telling you things that line up with the care, support their breeding efforts. Though, this is under the assumption that you are able to care for one. Wild-caught Peter's Bandit skinks can be found for around the 60s and 70s dollar price range. John Underground Reptiles sells them for $64.99. Big Apple Herp, who says they only sell captive breads, sells them for $84.99. I think the price is worth it though, since, you know, captive bred, they're captive bred and breeding for these guys is very difficult. For those who've bred animals before, more specifically skinks, breeding the Peter's Banded skinks is a, a mixed bag. You will need to incubate eggs for this species, they're in fact oviparous and lay around 4 eggs at a time. Incubation is its own topic that I most definitely cannot go into, as 1. I do not have experience incubating anything, and 2. Incubation is complex in not only making your incubator, but also diverse depending on the person, as in depending on how you go about it, as well as so many other factors that are just too much for me to cover. If you're interested in reptile egg incubation, I suggest you look for information on that specifically from those who, from those with experience in that department. There is very subtle sexual dimorphism in the species, arguably. Some report the males being slightly bulkier than females, but not only is that an unreliable way to measure, it also just doesn't really tell us much. But I think that's going to be all for this installment of Herp Corner. As always, sources will be in the description. If you're interested in the topic, I'd recommend looking further into their husbandry or history. If you learned something new with this one, feel free to subscribe. I do these every other week. Have a good evening, morning, or afternoon. Thank you for listening, watching, whatever, and I'll see you next time.